Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're back with some more Southeast Asian pack DLC animals for Planet Zoo. I'm sure the thumbnail and the title already gave it away, but we are adding the Clouded Leopard through today's session. And I am really excited to talk about some of the sort of thought process and inspiration and ideation behind the uh, time lapse and the enclosure that we're making for them. The Clouded Leopard has some very interesting sort of history, I guess you could call it, as far as their conservation status is concerned, in at least parts of the world. And uh, there's some interesting uh, folklore uh, that can also be sort of uh, connected to the Clouded Leopard that I find rather interesting, and I always love sharing uh, these kinds of stories and whatnot, so uh, a lot to talk about. But before we get into all of that, I just want to mention really quickly, folks, if you've been enjoying this mini-series, if you would like to see more like it in the future with more DLC and whatnot, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It does make a very big difference in sort of letting me know what people are enjoying, what people are not enjoying, how I can improve. I do read through all of the comments, and I look at the number of likes and comments to get a quick read on interest level. So if you're having a good time, make sure you let me know. It's a good way to make sure that uh, what you like seeing on the channel happens more often. And again, one more thing to mention is that if you would like to pick the DLC up for yourself, if you haven't done so already, uh, or if you want to, I guess, pick it up for a friend or anything, uh, you can actually do so at the link I have in the description down below. If you buy it at that link, you support the channel while getting the uh, DLC for yourself. You can buy a plethora of other games on my store as well, and it all supports the channel. So again, if you haven't picked it up yet and you're thinking about picking it up or picking something else up, maybe check it out, maybe see if... Uh, if it works for you, I guess. Uh, but with all that said, let's uh, let's let's get into it here. So with the clouded leopard, I actually wanted to touch on uh, their again rather curious conservation history in Taiwan. The clouded leopard in Taiwan. Sorry for the <laughs> long pause there. I'm just trying to find the best way to phrase this. So the clouded leopard in Taiwan is extinct. It no longer um, appears naturally in uh, in Taiwan, which is one of the places that it used to uh, inhabit. Or so we thought. In 2019, I believe it was, we believe that a clouded leopard was spotted in Taiwan. We don't know for sure. They're rather solitary animals. They're very secretive. Um, they don't like uh, they don't like spending time with humans. They're very shy as well. This is stuff we'll actually all learn in uh, in the Zoopedia article or entry, and very excited to get into that as well. But uh, but yeah, they're very shy animals, so we're not exactly sure, but we're fairly confident uh, that one was spotted in 2019. This was the last I uh, read up on it. I, I uh, did look it up before today's session, uh, and that that is what I found sort of, uh, as the last notable kind of entry with regards to the. Uh, existence of uh of the animal on taiwan in taiwan on taiwan in taiwan I'm like thinking about like on an island anyway um so uh so i thought that was a an interesting bit of i don't know if it's like it's 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 bittersweet i suppose um the bitter part of course being the fact that we thought them to be extinct uh in again in a specific area not not globally but in a specific area to not inhabit that space anymore uh, so that's the bitter part and the sweet part is that we may have actually spotted one uh relatively recently um, but even even that sweetness is is tempered a little bit because you know it shouldn't be so. Uh, <laughs> it's unfortunate that it needs to be such a big deal when we when we see an animal, right? Like it's like one would hope that, oh yeah, no, you know, whatever, it, yeah, they're they're around, but that's not the case. So I thought that was a uh, something to touch on. The Zoopedia entry actually doesn't uh, doesn't include Taiwan. Now I wonder if it's because the uh, the specific. Um, clouded leopard that lives on Taiwan, or lived, lives, I don't know which tense to use, uh, on Taiwan is a, uh, uh, is a subspecies. Uh, I believe it's also known as the Formosan clouded leopard, and uh, those of you that are familiar with some of the other animals that are available in the game will immediately recognize the word Formosan. If you don't, from other contexts, you will recognize the term Formosan uh, from the Formosan black bear. And that is where I segue into the fun little bit of uh, folklore that we're kind of tapping into and tying into and and uh, well <laughs> the folklore was is what led me on the path to discover uh stories about a people whose architectural styles i used to inspire the space so uh the people themselves are um from taiwan of taiwan indigenous to tra taiwan i suppose is the way to put it uh they as a culture still exist 
but very real people. So I sincerely hope that I've you know done the work justice here. Uh, I always do, obviously, but uh, if there are people out there who are aware, uh, just as many of you out there are are sort of a bit more intimately aware of the details of some of the other enclosures I made during this miniseries, uh, I've got a lot of uh, comments with regards to accuracies or or what I've done well and, and what I could do better. I'm always open to that, so if you know better, then please feel free to, uh, to let me know, to inform me so I can be better. It's always something I quest for, I guess. Uh, but the people uh, that I'm referencing are the Rukai people, and I might be I might be getting that uh, uh, pronounced wrong, and I apologize if I am. But the uh, the Rukai people of Taiwan, uh, they have a very uh, interesting uh, architectural style when it comes to their houses, and that is kind of what I'm mimicking back over here. Is I'm making one of these uh, uh, very uh, rather beautiful looking, and hopefully I'm able to recreate it even slightly beautiful looking houses um, with the uh, with the sloped roof. Well, you'll see it. Now, and while you're watching it get built, I want to tell you this uh, this fun little uh, story that um, that I just found so fascinating. But basically, the, uh, the, the, the old tale goes something like this. Um, the Formosan black bear and the Formosan outed leopard uh, originally both had extremely pale, pure white, I, th I think it was purely white or like extremely pale uh, fur. And they would look at the birds, they were very close friends, and they would look at the birds together and they would often talk about how it's, uh, the birds were so beautiful, they had such you know, colorful um, feathers and, and oh, wouldn't it be nice to be, you know, a bit more colorful ourselves and here we are instead just, you know, uh, just pale and, 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 and nothing in comparison when you, when you consider the beauty of these birds. And they would think about this often and then um, one day, Again, my, my telling of this story is a little fuzzy, right? So uh, do look it up, um, because it, you, you'll find other retellings and different versions of it and whatnot, so forgive me for, uh, for my, uh, my roughness of my, of my telling. But one day, uh, they came across a, uh, I, I guess it was like, um, ink is, is what I read, but I don't know if, you know, ink existed at the time, so to speak. It must have been some other uh, pigmenting, like, agent of pigmentation, but, you know, when the story was written, I guess, ink. Anyway, they came across ink, let's say, right? Uh, and uh, and they thought, um, hey, why don't we uh, paint ourselves, uh, paint our coats, and then we'll look beautiful too. A genius idea. And so the, uh, the bear and the leopard said they would take turns painting each other, because, you know, you can't paint yourself as nicely as somebody else might be able to paint you. So the uh, Formosan black bear was the first painter and so the snow leopard you know waited patiently as the uh as the black bear went around and used this ink to create these like beautiful patterns and beautiful like shapes and whatnot and, and really a beautiful coat for the uh for the uh <laughs> the the clouded leopard uh and then uh, because it took so long the bear got a little tired and was like you know what i i need to rest so he, he put his head down and, and rested for a little bit but at this point the clouded leopard had run out of patience. It was kind of like, well, do we really have to wait? So I just took all the ink and just <laughs> lathered the bear in it. Just covered him up. And the only spots he missed were the spots that were, uh, like, the the bear basically had, uh, had had put his head down to rest, and his head, his, the, the, like his, his nose, was resting on his chest. And so he had some spots they had to avoid as he was applying all this ink. And so the Formosan black bear ended up being just fully covered in all black, except for those few spots, which make for the iconic kind of like patch on the uh, on the Formosan black bear. I thought that was a beautiful story. Uh, <laughs> what goes on afterwards is a little less beautiful. The bear wakes up and is very upset because he created such artistry, and in response, his close friend, the clouded leopard, just, <laughs> just covered him completely in, in ink, uh, except for a couple of patches. And so the bear was very upset, and uh, they parted ways. They were no longer friends, and that's unfortunate, but uh, the the leopard was quite upset. Uh, it, it, like, he was, he was, he, I guess, uh, I guess the idea is he was regretful of what he had done, and so he often would give uh, offerings of free food uh, to the uh, Formosan black bear. Like, he would eat only the innards of, uh, of his prey, uh, and then leave behind everything else for the uh, for the bear to have instead, as sort of like a I guess a way of asking for forgiveness or what have you. I thought it was a really fun story, and it's again it's from these uh, from the uh, Rukai people's histories. Uh, there are some other stories as well about how the uh, Outed Leopard is an excellent hunter, how 
the Cloud Leopard uh, has helped guide the uh, foundation of many villages and, and cities. Uh, and in fact, uh, I think there are quite a few tribes that have quite a few stories uh, from Taiwan with regards to the, uh, the Clouded Leopard. But there was something about the, uh, the Formosan uh, Black Bear and the Formosan Clouded Leopard and their relationship that just uh, <laughs> it just resonated with me. I thought it was really rather uh, cute and fun and interesting. And I wanted to share it. And uh, and then that one thing led me to another. And I started looking into these people and their housing structures and whatnot. I would have liked to have used... Um, they, they stack slate rocks to uh, to make their walls and stuff. And I would have loved to have done that. But that's not an option. So instead, I went with the, uh, the bamboo, which is another material that they use fairly often. But uh, my ramblings about uh, fun story time uh, have eaten up all of this time lapse. Back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse, and I got to say I am pretty pleased with how the space has ended up. Uh, I was a little worried going into it. It's very different from anything I've ever done ever before, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, pretty happy with how it's worked out. It was uh, not as painful of an experience as I'd initially anticipated, but I mean, I say that. I should maybe hold off on saying that until the animals are actually in here and they're able to, uh, you know, navigate the space, hopefully, without escaping too easily or anything like that, because uh, I think I've got the barriers set up properly. I think I've got everything set up okay in a way that they won't be able to um, to venture where they're not supposed to venture. But as they are climbers, uh, they might every once in a while find a little escape route or two. But that's okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. We'll be able to very quickly, I think, take care of that. If push comes to shove, we'll find ways to block them off and hold them in, and hopefully they're not able to climb out from uh, from this little pool of theirs. Uh, hopefully all their climbing will be restrained to the uh, the, the roofing over here, thanks to the, uh, the the logs over here, but we'll find out. I might... The big thing that I'm, I guess, concerned about is that the, uh, the climbing um, aspect I might be uh, missing out on. I might not have this connected properly, and I might not actually calculate all of this as a part of their climbing platforms, and if that is the case, then I will build... I think you saw... Uh, momentarily in the time lapse I was like toying around with the idea of building a climbing platform back over here uh, if necessary then what, that's what we'll do we'll go ahead and make a little uh, jungle gym if you will uh, in the back over here and that will allow the uh, uh, allow the uh, allow the climbing uh, needs I guess to be met the only reason I had to hesitate as I sort of finish that thought there is like maybe it'd be nicer to have it out over here just so you can see them play a bit more and maybe it'll actually connect to the uh, the roof kind of breaks the well, not breaks. It's a little different than, I guess, what I would do as far as authenticity or... I mean, obviously, this isn't, like... It's, authenticity is always a weird thing when it comes to these things because there's only so authentic you can be to begin with um, that, you know, at what point is it okay to, to break the rules, as it were, or break authenticity, let's let's use that as the word, uh, in order to make for a better you know viewing experience, for example, or what have you. It's always one of those uh, eternal struggles, I suppose. But anyway, uh, pretty pleased with the space overall. I mean, I'm sure the time lapse kind of explained my thinking. It's very different as well, outside of being different from a uh, you know structural perspective. Uh, it's also a very different. Uh, it was a very different beast from a um, from a uh, sort of uh, inspiration perspective as well. I would say. Um, I was thinking about the animal very differently than I typically think about these animals uh, when I look for inspiration, when I look for direction, you know, visual direction or cultural direction or what have you. So this was definitely different uh, on that front. And again, like I was saying earlier as well, uh, not something I've ever approached in the past. Now, again, if this was our franchise mode zoo, uh, I would definitely like, you know, add some decorative elements to the pathing as well and maybe try and find a way to make it so that the guests are actually able to take these stairs up. I kind of like using these steps as barriers as well, but... Uh, but that's, uh, that's a conversation for another time. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the animal. Let's go ahead and familiarize, familiarize ourselves, sorry, with the animal. And as I do that, I just want to mention, folks, again and as always, if you've been enjoying this little mini-series, if you'd like to see more like it in the future with more DLC or, you know, maybe maybe sometimes with the uh, older animals as well, whatever it might be, if you like it, please let me know by, well, liking the video. Uh, you can leave a comment down below as well because it lets me know, again, how you feel, if you have any more specific comments you'd like to share, any more specific thoughts. And again, it's kind of what's guided me in the animal selections all the way from the uh, uh, beginning right up until now and afterwards as well. I saw some comments about doing the uh, proboscis... Pr 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 probus is that what it is? Probus yes, proboscis. Uh, <laughs> doing the proboscis monkey and the tapir, the Malayan, Malayan tapir separately as opposed to together. I've seen some comments about doing them together. 
I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, it's just a matter of how many more episodes of this um, series you want to do before we go back to our franchise mode. Uh, zoo and I saw some comments as well with regards to missing Elitsu South and I do too actually I was thinking about that yesterday like oh it's gonna be so strange going back to it but anyway keep letting me know down below folks leave those likes leave those comments it does make a very big difference uh, like I said previously as well if you haven't uh, yet picked up the DLC if you'd like to pick the DLC up and support the channel as you do so there is a link in the description down below as well and again it really does support the channel significantly so just uh, throwing it out there and let's go ahead and now dive into the clouded leopard the Neophilus Nebulosa. Ooh, that's that's pretty. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So they are vulnerable. Population in wild is about 10,000. It is interesting. Again, it's sort of a almost a juxtaposition with what I was just saying during the time lapse. What I hope I had just said, because I'll be recording the VO afterwards uh, during the time lapse. But they are they are vulnerable. I would expect a, a much more significantly worse situation, I suppose. But. The Clouded Leopard is a medium-sized arboreal cat that lives in the forests and grasslands grasslands, sorry, of Southeast Asia. It has yellow to gray fur that is covered in large black reticulated rings. Their head, legs, and tail are covered in black spots and stripes. Clouded Leopards are between 27.6 inches and 43.2 inches long, with a tail length of 27.6 to 36.4 inches. Males are larger than females. Clouded leopards weigh between 24.2 pounds and 50.6 pounds. This one's got that weird sentence structure again, where it just kind of like, it doesn't really transition between thoughts. It just kind of like, just kind of just, just like pounces, much like a leopard, I suppose, from one, one thought to another. The clouded leopard is a vulnerable species. Its population is largely fragmented across its range due to habitat destruction by deforestation. This reduces the amount of habitat and prey that the leopards have access to and also decreases their choices of mates. They are poached for their skins and for body parts that are used in traditional medicine. It is illegal to hunt clouded leopards, and they are protected across their range. The leopards are being researched to better understand how they mate and reproduce, and there are many facilities that have entered into captive breeding programs in order to conserve the clouded leopard. Yeah, uh, again, a bit of a bit of a danger spot. That's why I was kind of surprised with this with the with the vulnerable rating. But um, hey, uh, it is what it is. Learn, learn something new, I guess, every day, right? And that's kind of the point of the Zoopedia, uh, reading the Zoopedia entries as well. Natural habitat. So yeah, they are quite spread out. And uh, as, Zo as like this entry was saying, uh, they're, they're split up as well. Like they have little pockets of, uh, of, of habitation, I guess, let's call it, um, where I, I can't imagine it's very easy for them to, to transition from like here to here, for example. You know, there's like, there's mountain ranges, there's uh, rivers, there's, villages and 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 cities and towns and all sorts of uh you know interference in the area and of course the deforestation as well you have to i i wonder sometimes like does a what what is the range that an animal is willing to travel to go from habitable space to habitable space right like birds as an example they travel quite far when the winter comes right as far as like, like their migratory patterns and whatnot they're quite large uh we consider the migration patterns in like the uh the Serengeti and whatnot, there, there are quite large ranges uh, that these animals travel to find, uh, you know, whether it's food or habitation or what have you. But uh, where where is that line drawn? And I'm sure it's different for different animals, but where is that line drawn? Where What is what is too far to travel? And, you know, with, with something like the, uh, the birds flying south or, um, you know, this, again, the Serengeti migration patterns, you are sort of traveling through acceptable-ish, let's say, um biomes and 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 climates and stuff as you get from point a to point b right uh maybe i'm mistaken correct me if i'm wrong but i'm fairly certain like it's it's you know fairly acceptable transitions all the way through uh the entire migration but with the uh, you know if there's a huge gap of now obviously if there's cities if there's urbanization that's a different conversa uh, conversation entirely right um because you're not going to travel through a city where all these you know scary loud noises and massive metal structures and things like that you're not going to deal with that i understand that but if it's like deforestation without some industrial exploitation or what have you existing there like a building or whatever uh would an animal you know how far would an animal be willing to go in uncomfortable terrain to get to comfortable terrain i mean survival is the uh the key right so you would think very far but maybe not maybe it's like no you know i'll make do with the space i do have and uh, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I guess that's why we need conservation efforts, right? It's just something to think about when you see such a fractured, like, you know, is it really that, that difficult to go from 
from here to here? Probably not, but I imagine going from here to here is, again, I don't have like a geographical overlay, so I can't quite recall what the the actual like, you know, topography and stuff of the region is like, but just from distance alone. Something I think about when I look at a map like this. Uh, but yeah, they're quite widespread. Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, and India. And of course, the discussions from the time lapse. Uh, tropical and temperate biome. So we kind of leaned in on the tropical primarily. Uh, not a lot of land needed at all because they don't live in large like groups or anything. I'm pretty sure they're fairly solitary animals. So I don't think we'll need too much land. And we're right at the cusp actually of how much land they need. Hopefully I have enough. Hopefully I don't have to like make adjustments and expand the uh, the uh, the navigable area too much now 81 meters squared is the climbing requirement that's like i was saying earlier i'm a little nervous about that i'm not sure exactly how well that's going to work out if it's going to work out hopefully it will be fine and of course temperature requirements i think will be okay we haven't had real temperature issues at all i think uh throughout this entire um you know showcase so i think we'll be fine here as well species data well, that's everything over here yeah i really hope they're not able to jump <laughs> across this little pool of theirs all right species data one to two is the group size, up to one female, up to one male. Uh, bachelor group size is one. Just one. Truly a bachelor. Um, it's, yeah, very, very, very solitary. Uh, there is no dominant system. Their mating system is promiscuous. Shy when it comes to humans. So I'm really hoping this, like, covered up space makes them feel a bit more comfortable and the distance makes them feel a bit more comfortable. I'm hoping. Uh, but yeah, they are shy and guests, of course, cannot enter the habitat. 22 inches tall at the shoulder for males on average. Females are 20 inches tall at the shoulder on average. Life expectancy is 15 years across the board. And weight is 41.8 pounds for males and 29.7 pounds for females. That is quite a difference. Sexual maturity at 2.5 years. Sterility at 15. So I guess if they... Hmm. I guess if they live beyond their life expectancy, they go sterile. Uh, as opposed to this thing, death. Which just means they'll be... They'll be um, fertile all the way to the end. Interesting. Number of offspring per mating event is 1 to 5. Gestation and incubation period about 3 months. Interbirth is 24 months and reproduction captivity is difficult. I kind of wish we had uh, got these guys involved sooner because of that difficult uh, label there. But uh, hopefully we'll see some baby uh, clouded leopards. And if not, then there's always going to be our franchise mode opportunities to see them. Or, you know, we can maybe like fast forward time or something. We'll figure it out. Social needs. Clouded leopards are solitary and live alone except for when mothers are with their cubs. Reproduction. The mating habits of clouded leopards in the wild are unknown due to the secretive nature of the animal, although it has been observed in captivity. Males can detect whether a female is an estrus through the scent of her urine. Males and females may mate several times while she is receptive. Males can be aggressive towards females during mating, biting the back of their necks and often causing them harm, or in some cases, death. Oh, that's counterintuitive. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, if mating is successful, the female will be pregnant for 85 to 109 days and then give birth to 1 to 5 cubs, 3 on average. The cubs will start eating solid food at two months old, and their mother will start teaching them how to hunt around the same age. Wow. <laughs> they will be fully weaned between four to six months old, and remain with their mother for around ten months before leaving the litter. Clouded leopards reach sexual maturity between 20 to 30 months old. Yeah, I got, you gotta move fast, right? Two months old, they start hunting. That's wild. Or start learning how to hunt. It's crazy. Um, yeah, damn. In some cases, death. That's uh, very counterintuitive. I wonder if that at all plays a part in, uh, in the... Um, like conservation status and whatnot like i hate to bring up this example because I, I i know some folks don't like it but just as an example um pandas are uh they're like um it's almost like they they want to just stop being you know <laughs> they they are very difficult to get to mate uh they don't mate they'd much rather you know eat bamboo and sleep um so uh, that that's a part of the declining population. Obviously, when they don't mate, what are you what are you gonna get? Uh, in this case as well, it's just like if you end up killing the female, you're not going to propagate the species. So is that a part of the the problem? I wonder. I wonder. I wonder many things. Processed meat, whole carcass, and whole carcass and bones. All right. Nothing special about diet stuff typically. Uh, over here we have the hammock and the scratching tree. Uh, both the Scots Pine as well as the Tamarind. We have got the Hammock as well as the Tamarind Scratching Tree 
uh, in, in the uh, enclosure. So hopefully we'll see some action on both of those. I really want to see the hammock <laughs> um, animation especially. And then there's the frozen blood pumpkin and the pinata enrichment. You know, I got to say, I was thinking this during the time lapse as well. I'm not the biggest fan of the... Uh, I wish there was an alternative as well. The, the zebra is so um, geographically locked. You know what I mean? Like, I, I wish there were, like, a few different pinata versions. I like the idea of the pinata and all that kind of stuff, sure. But it's like, the zebra, I don't feel like belongs in this enclosure. But it's the only option I on, only option I have. Frozen blood pumpkin and the pinata. And it's just like, how many pumpkins do I want to put down? Like, what, was it 20 pumpkins? No, I want to have a bit of variety. Uh, but the zebra doesn't feel like it belongs. And yet, here we are, of course, uh, for lack of choice. Fun fact number one, the clouded leopard can roar like big cats and meow like small cats. Okay. That's actually, that sounds like a very simple fun fact, but that's a very fun fact. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what I've been told in the past, what I've learned in the past, at least a long time ago now, is that uh, big cats, or rather cats, either meow or roar. There's no both. Um, I believe it's like there's a, the, the, the sort of biological structure required to do one or the other. They're like exclusive. Um, and again, there are many of you who know so much uh, that often chime in in the comments. Please do if I'm like misrepresenting something or if I've got something wrong. But I'm fairly certain that uh, that you either meow or you roar. But here we have the clouded leopard that can do both. So that is actually a pretty fun fact uh, if, I've, if I've got that right. Uh, if I've not got that right, then it's just kind of like it's it's a fact, <laughs> not not so fun. But I'm I'm pretty sure I've got that right. Again, like I said, if you if you know better, then please leave a comment down below. I do read through all the comments, like I've said always. Uh, I read through all the comments, and there's just like always so much insight and like opportunity for me to learn as well. Um, so uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's that's interesting. I wonder if we'll hear both. Fun fact number two: the clouded leopard spends most of its time in trees, using its long tail to balance as it climbs. Oh, it's, like, it's a good thing we have a couple of trees here and there. Fun fact number three, the clouded leopard can open its mouth wider than any other cat, and its dentition is most like the extinct saber-toothed tiger. Wow, that's cool. All right, that's cool. That's now two animals in this DLC that have had their uh, dentition pointed out, and it has been confirmed to me that, yes, it is not just about, like, the number of teeth, but also their their placement. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, we were, it was close-ish, I would say. Uh but I was just using, like, the root, like, the French te tooth as the root for my guests. And, like, you think about words like dentist and whatnot. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah. So, that's that's actually pretty cool that they're... they're <laughs> I'm a, I like saber tooth tiger. I think they're, I, I think they're very... I think they're kind of cool. So, that's kind of cool. Uh, fun fact number four. The ankle joints of clouded leopards are incredibly flexible and allow their paws to rotate backwards. Making them excellent climbers adapted to life in the treetops. Yo, that's okay. That's really interesting. Uh, fun fact number five: Clouded leopards have canines that are two inches long, the same length as a tiger, despite the tiger being five times bigger in size. Now that's ridiculous. How can a how can a not canine have a canine? Right? I'm, I'm joking, obviously. It's a terrible joke. Don't don't don't. It's not funny. Um, that's interesting though. Uh, from like a pure uh, uh, like proportions perspective, <laughs> I like that they put it like that as well. Pretty good fun facts. These these are pretty good fun facts. You know, this DLC, for as far as fun facts are concerned, more hits than misses, I would say. I'm liking these for sure. Yeah, I want, I wanna, I'm gonna look up the what, what I was saying about fun fact number one afterwards. Um, I'm fairly certain, fairly certain about the roaring and meowing thing. But uh, anyway, with that said, why don't we go ahead and get these animals in here and see how they interact with the space? Hopefully, they're able to enjoy the space fully without uh, any you know issues or anything. So, animal trading over to animal market. Yep over to our what I'm looking for the clouded leopard there we go wow what are the chances you got this whole thing to click I love when this happens this whole thing I could click on and somehow I managed to click just a little off this is like what are the chances all right clouded leopard I've been told I can press this button ah and then click confirm weird it didn't used to be like that they should I liked it how it was before where you just click and it would Update it right away, you know? Anyway, irrelevant. Hop. I'm like trying to place that name. Is that a... Is that a name or is that like a... Like a pet name they've... G anyway. Uh, just my curiosity. So again, we can only have one of each. So these two, maybe? Sure. Let's get these two. Higher fertilities, right? So sure. Adopt you and adopt you over to our animals 
And let's go ahead and get a Clouded Leopard, both of you, into quarantine all the way over here. Yeah. Still, I find it funny that I didn't have the uh, the veterinary uh, surgery and, and whatnot. And the, the trouble we're having with the Keeper Huts, it's kind of funny like when things like that uh, come up when expanding what was supposed to be a very small project. I just thought it was pretty... Uh, <laughs> This just makes me think back to the Aquatic DLC and the first venture here. Um, we'll also today, by the way, be keeping an eye on these guys as well. Because if we do end up with... Alright, there we go. Uh, I was going to say, it's like, because if we do end up with some uh, some puppers, I obviously want to catch that happening. Uh, but beyond that as well, I mean, they're, they're dogs, so, you know, you know we're going to be spending time with them, right? Man, still very pleased with this. <laughs> I like this. I'm very happy with this waterfall. Uh, I know some of you saw it coming, and, and some of you have requested that I stop with the waterfalls. And uh, and here you go. I was very tempted. I uh, I, I could have could have very easily made excuses to include more waterfalls uh, with this enclosure as well. Uh, one of the regions that um, that the, uh, the clouded leopard lives in uh, is is known for having like many 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 waterfalls, uh, and. Uh, and I decided against it, not just for that one reason, but, uh, but I just thought it was kind of funny. When I was doing my research, I was like, ha, <laughs> waterfalls, they chase me. I don't chase them. <laughs> I didn't choose the waterfall life, the waterfall life chose me. All right, here we go. Put the water back in. There we go. And I wonder if it would be nice to, I mean, we could change the uh, others here as well. I like Everglade. There's something... I just don't know if it's right, you know? That always, I find that always holds me back when it comes to uh, um, this and, uh, and and vegetation as well. I was just like, oh, I just don't know, you know, would these trees really, like, coexist? Would they really be side by side? Like, that kind of stuff just always uh, makes me think about or wonder or second guess the um, placing of, of, uh, of vegetation. How, how is it that both of these guys are diseased? This has been, as far as uh, a sandbox <laughs> has been, like, is concerned, this has been a lot more uh, involved than I would have expected. So one of them is okay now. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. It's just like, why, uh, why make it, um... Why make it, uh... Difficult, I guess, for lack of a better word. Anyway, one of these guys is ready to go. Oh, I see. Doesn't really matter, but... Fine, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like, why am I going to start taking taking care of these little things now, after after all this? Sandbox Zoo, we're, just, we're here for the animals. Um, why am I not seeing... There we go. The other guy's about to come through as well. Let's just put them at the same time. Because then I can just, like, watch the animals in their space afterwards. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Alright, good. They're both done. Up and Zazie, move you both over. All the way. There we go. Up to here. Habitat 15. Cool. And it, is, uh, it should be easy for the staff to get up here. They just have to go this way, right? They've got their shortcut up over here. It's actually been suggested that I make this into a uh, uh, like a regular path as well so that guests can go up there. Um, the thing is that guests would go through this stuff, which would make them upset. And I'm not too fussed about them being made upset or anything like that. But I do want to see if they'll use this like intricate weaving path that we've made for them. And it does look like we're seeing some action. And I wonder if with the uh, leopard added in, we'll see some more. And then if we'll see... Uh, We'll see even more after uh, we get our uh, Hibuscus Monkey and the um, Malayan Tapir in this area as well, right? Because this is a reminder, uh, they're all kind of coming to this space over here. Whether it's going to be a shared enclosure or two separate enclosures or what have you is still uncertain and up in the air. But uh, I thought it'd be neat to have at least a monkey, you know, be visible from up from like top down and you can see them climb this area. Uh, so we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Where is, there we go, they're both arriving roughly at the same time, as expected. There we go. Oh, you know what? They totally can escape from over here.
like completely uh, didn't occur to me. They can just. I, I imagine they'll be willing to jump in. Did they? Ah, oh, that's funny. I imagine they'd be willing to jump in. Let's go ahead and take a look at their habitat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No surprise there. They're able to reach everything. That's good. <laughs> it's so funny. I was like, yeah, I hope this is okay. Miss this entire uh, section over here. Just wonder if I. Hmm. If I do, you know what, here's, here's what we'll do instead. I don't quite like how that looked. Here's what we'll do instead. Let's go ahead and put down glass. Least invasive of options, I suppose. So, sure. I'll stick with these guys. What do think about the space and whatnot? Social. Not enough space, really, eh? Oh, seriously? That's just my luck, too. By, like, the slightest bit. But you can see the uh, climbing area is also not up to par here. So this is obviously not enough. They don't consider the uh, roof to be climbable. What if we do uh, that? Because, again, I, I want to try and make it minimally invasive. And uh, and then if, if that doesn't work, then we'll go ahead and, and escalate, as it were. All right, let's go ahead and get you... Up like so. Get these guys up as well. We have to move them forward a bit. You know what? I can get rid of that. I can get rid of that. These two can actually... Reach up like so. We got... Why? <laughs> I guess Sandbox is not without its notifications, there is that. I, I wonder if with the next DLC, whenever that comes, if I'll uh, if I'll come back to this zoo, or if I'll just start a new Sandbox zoo to uh, avoid some of those, the notification spam that we're getting. And that barely helped, eh? Alright, so here's what we'll do just to encourage their climbing. Go ahead and... Pop this up here. There we go. Get these guys, and what I'll I'll basically try and build like a lattice over here. What I'm thinking, as much as needed. That. Pull you over like this instead. There we go. And pull these guys up. Yeah, I wasn't wasn't sure if uh, if the climbing would work out, and uh, there's our answer. Needed more, very well. We get these guys up here as well. So and like so. All right, all right, and of course we need some supports up here too. To make sure this thing's actually on something, not just floating. this kind of a and take it all the way to the, to the ground up oh, like I try to balance the suspension of disbelief I guess is, is, is the way to put it as much as possible all right pull these guys over hopefully that does the trick where are you guys hey buddy yeah looks like we're good Wonderful. And now they're counting... No, I guess not. I was wondering if they'd count the roof as a traversable area as well, but I guess not. However, they are pleased with their space, so that's good. They like their hard shelter, their terrain, they like the plant coverage, they like everything. Alright, good. We're pretty close, I would say. We did uh, we did pretty well uh, hitting the nail on the head with their enclosure right off the bat. So that means... I have to watch their... Um, watch their interactions. Just see what they get up to. And hope that we also get uh, the whole babies. Hey buddy. Not chilling here by the by the mister, eh? You are the mister. Where is the missus? Now they can get into the water, can they get out of the they can. Okay, wonderful. I was worried that this was a bit too steep. 
uh, but it felt right visually, like based on like references and whatnot. So I, I was really hoping this would work out, and it appears that it does. So that's wonderful. Where where is? Hold on a second. Where is the other? Oh, one more thing to check actually. That guy's happy. This does count as climbing, and this does count as a surface that they can rest on. Okay, good. Good stuff. But yeah, as I was saying, where is our other? Oh, there you are, resting on the tree. Wonderful. We were told that's where they spend most of their time. What a beauty. Look at those eyes. Of course, you close them as I say that, but look at those eyes, though. Oh. <laughs> A little slight adjustment here. Fair enough. Adorable. The ear wiggles. Can never get enough ear wiggles. They are beautiful. They're so well done. They're so well done in this game. I'm glad to see we get. I'm glad to. I'm glad we get to see- wow, that sentence took a lot of effort. <laughs> I'm glad we get to see some, uh, some animations, like some of these climbing animations and stuff. I remember when I first built, uh, the, uh, the tiger habitat at Elitsu North. Uh, we went a little, a little complicated with it, for sure. Oh, hey, buddy. Uh, definitely went over the, uh, over the top with my approach, making them a treehouse, a very complicated treehouse, and, uh, they refused to climb. They had, uh, they were able to climb it, they just refused to climb. And I was just like, man, I spent like an hour and a half making this thing uh why are you not climbing uh and i think like either at the end of that episode or like an episode later or even two episodes later i remember i remember it feeling like a very long time they eventually uh started using the uh the treehouse and sleeping in it and stuff and i was just so pleased we we're climbing all the way up there to get to the bedding and, and and lying down and all the little uh cubs and stuff as well oh, it was amazing so it's nice to see more proactive climbing i guess from the animals of late Low welfare, a couple of stressed animals. Do we have... Oh, overcrowding over here. Wait, we have babies as well. Alright, okay, okay. There's, there's... Okay. A little responsible here. Fertile, alright. Rehome you. We'll have to, I don't want to, again, get bogged down in management stuff for the, for the sandbox zoo, but let's go ahead and take a look at Zayan over here. Hey, buddy. Also, another one. Just, on. Yeah, go away. <laughs> there we go. Are they not beautiful? And it's dinner time. Well, this certainly got bigger. Right, because it's uh, food grade 3 now, I'm giving them, I think. Oh, they're so cute. We have two puffers. Okay, cool. Now, what was it again? They, they whistle, right? They don't bark, but... It sounds like they have the same uh, vocalizations as some of the other dog uh, species in the game. Oh my god, those eyes. Those ears. Go, go play. Go, come on. Come on. Fine, go that way instead. These guys are really adorable. But we're here for the clouded leopards today, so I should go back to the clouded leopards, right? Right. Where are we? Oh, too far that way. Here we are. I really want to see them use the hammock. Are they both in the trees right now? Oh, there's one of them. Oh, they are both in the trees. <laughs> That's hilarious. The whole ankle thing was wild to to read. They can like flip it backwards or what have you. They are expert climbers. Able to climb the air itself. Which, magnificent creatures. Nature truly is astounding. Look at that. Look at that moonwalk. There we go. What? Nope. I see, I see. You've opted for 
this level as opposed to the wait what is what is what is going on man <laughs> this can't be comfortable do you think it thinks it's climbing like what do you think the ai is thinking right now oh it's climbing right that's why it's got the uh, climb animation triggered i don't understand sometimes the issues this game has <laughs> that's unfortunate Some experience. Come on. Come on to the to the hammock. Let's go. No, to the hammock. Wouldn't mind seeing them uh sleeping up top here as well. This was maybe a bit too complicated for these guys to navigate. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh dear nothing will ever replace the uh the bear the slender bear but uh but that uh that was certainly a sight oh my i have no words i understand like the uh the structure's a little complex and whatnot i, I totally get that but like That wasn't it navigating a complex structure. That was it uh, having a broken jump animation, you know? Oh, look at that. That animation's not broken, though. Amazing. Excellent. What a yawn. What a yawn. Time for a nap. Whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. Two in here. Come on. Give me a yawn. There we go. Lying down any second now. Yes, the ear wiggles. Look at those eyes. Look at those adorable eyes. Yep, here we go. Come on. Yes. Oh, so good. What a stretch. Yes. <laughs> There's something about watching an animal just like stretch and yawn and just like get comfy. So I got a pet. Uh, some of you will know this, some of you will not. Uh, I've got a pet rabbit. And uh, every time she like stretches, um, it's very, very cat like actually, uh, in like the angles and poses and whatnot. But uh, I just can't, like, I everything stops. If, like, if I, if I notice it, like, I can't focus on anything else until, like, I'm done watching her stretch and yawn. Uh, it's so cute. It's just, I don't know, there's something about, if there's something so, like, um, it's, it's almost like, uh, it's like, it's like mirror neurons start firing, you know, and you just kind of feel like, <laughs> like, yeah, I feel that. I can go for a stretch and a yawn right now. Especially with yawning. Yawning is often, like, one of the most common uh, like triggers for yawning is, is seeing somebody else yawn or our mirror neurons trigger they, they fire right away they just start like going yeah that person's yawning why don't we yawn too I feel like there's some innate connection with uh, with animals doing the same as well and the stretch is, is the same oh look it's so, so cute watching them sleep it's like seeing their dreams and whatnot look at that look at that tail oh you're awake now okay that's, that's why your tail's moving oh I thought it was this guy's tail and I was like oh those teeth, though. Wild. But, uh, but yeah, I thought it was... That's that's the other thing that's always fun to watch, is, like, when, when an animal is having a dream, uh, and you see their behaviors. What is this? Uh, leopards are, uh, magical creatures. Um, mythical beasts, even. Uh, but yeah, like, when, when they're dreaming, and, and you can see their, uh, their mouths move, or their, their ears get all satellite dish and whatnot. Love it. One time, I think, one time, uh, the, uh, the rabbit, her name's Elizabeth, had, uh, had a nightmare and woke up from it and, uh, and, like, woke up with a sprint, an immediate sprint, and I was like, oh, must have been a nightmare. This is interesting. Never seen the, uh, the, uh, blood pumpkin eating animation up close. I didn't know it existed, frankly. I thought it just kind of, like, disappeared. This thing is massive, also. Or these guys are just kind of small. Oh, there we go. All right, well, now we know that the episode has uh, checked all the boxes and stuff. Come on, it's like right here. It's right here. You haven't been to this side. They can reach it, I'm almost certain. We checked. Yeah, they can reach it for sure. They can get under it, they can get over it, they can get on it. Over here. 
getting rid of the UI so I don't get distracted by constant notifications. Come on. This is it. This is it, right? Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. Oh. No. No. <laughs> okay. Loop back around. Top of the hammock. Come on. We're also, we're going to have a hard time. Um, with their uh, breeding. It's funny that this happens as I'm saying that because uh, we just saw the other one. Oh, look at that climb. That is a long way up. Oh, look at that. That's cool. That's impressive. But yeah, we just saw the other one climb up to the, the tree over there, and this one chooses to climb up over here. It's just like, wow, okay. It's already going to be hard to see them, like, to have them breed, but uh, it doesn't help if they spend all their time away from each other. I think, uh, I think we might have our thumbnail here. The vibrant red, the green. Their kind of pale, desaturated look. Such a beautiful job by the devs, just like making all these animals come to life. Oh, I want to look at a tree. All right. What one last one last shot over here to hopefully see the hammock be used. Keep going, buddy. Keep going. Nothing can stop you. Nothing will keep you away from your hammock, right? Come on. Come on, you know you want to. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. How do I coax a pixel animal into the hammock? It looks like he's in the mood to play. Or he's just like cooling off over here. Nope, just, just having a lie down. Alright, fair enough. You've come down as well. Are you headed to the hammock? Maybe? Maybe? Head in the general correct direction. They haven't really gone for a swim yet, have they? I guess they don't really care to swim. They're not swimmers. Giving them access to the water is not a bad thing, but like they just they don't care that much to swim. I don't think we're going to see any hammock action. Looks like that guy's going to slow-mo jump onto the steps there. Yep. Yeah. And then and do this whole thing. Yeah, whoa, okay. Oh, guys up. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You know you want to. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, literally nothing I can do to, like, get them up here. Just hope that they, uh, they trigger the animation at one point. Oh, maybe. No, no, they don't. He doesn't. He don't. Does not care. Does not care for the hammock. What are you gonna do, folks? I don't know what I'm gonna do. That is all the session. I think we had a good time today. Hopefully, next session we'll see some uh, baby clouded leopards. Clouded leopards. People want to say cloud leopards, and I'm like, that that doesn't sound right. Clouded. Yes, clouded leopards. Cool. Hopefully we'll see some uh, some baby clouded leopards next time, but this is where we're going to call it a session today. Hope you enjoyed today's session. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. If you have any feedback, any thoughts, any opinions, feel free to share. Any uh, opinions, especially about the uh, proboscis monkey and the Malayan tapir. Uh, should they be together? Should they be separately? Let me know. Again, think about as well the uh, effect it has on Elitsu South if you're watching that series. And if you're not watching that series, then maybe you want to dive in. Uh, yes, it's a lot of episodes so far, but it's not too late to join in on the fun. We get a lot of stuff done. We do a lot of fun exploration, a lot of cool uh, uh, design work and stuff. So if you've uh, enjoyed this mini-series and you're not subscribed to the channel and you want to see more Planet Zoo, then that is something to consider as well. But folks, yes, this is where we're calling it. Hope you had a good time. If you did, like I was saying just moments ago, leave a like, leave a comment. If you didn't have a good time, leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know why and what I can do to make sure you do have a good time next time. But uh, it's quite wild, actually, to see just how this zoo has expanded and, like, come out, gone full circle. And, uh, and we'll be adding one more animal roughly over there. I don't think they'll make a visible kind of impact from this, uh, this like, sort of bird's eye view that I like to end episodes on. But, um, but it's, it's, it's really interesting. I'd love to go back to the beginning of this series and see the opening of that, that first frame of that first episode. Uh, and, like, the first frame of every episode and, and just kind of, like, see the, uh, the evolution. It's not perfectly lined up, but it's, you know, it's close enough. Anyway, folks, I digress. 
Hope you had a good time. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.